Josh just has to click the button to join. Frank, how bored are you? What have you been doing? Golfing. How's the game, bro? I golf like every day. It's Josh. Josh has a beard. Who are you? <laughs> no, Josh looks great. Can anybody hear me? All I see is just Yeah, we hear you. Can you hear us? <laughs> Look at that beard. Dad. You look great. Can you hear us? Anything to say, Ben? Uh, what? But, like, Josh, you remember being the two. The two is the oh. worst position ever. You just sit there. I was always I open. <laughs> <laughs> always open. But, like, Sam or Frank would hit a three, and I'd be like, nice shot. But I was, I was still like, – <laughs> No, it, was, that <laughs> no, no it, wasn't, it wasn't, like, a couple plays later. It was literally running back on defense. <laughs> If, like, one of us hit a shot or if, like, I had a backdoor layup. Yeah, yeah, be like, yeah. it wasn't a shot. It was a dunk. Yeah, Why you'd be like, dunk? You'd be like <laughs> nice, nice finish, but I was there on the kickout. <laughs> I have a great story about this. So, uh, Ben once had the bright idea that we should run a play where if I ever get a dunk, it Ben's in the corner coming from the baseline. I should miss the dunk over the rim, throw it to Ben in the corner. I remember that. <laughs> Practice that in open gym. <laughs> Three points is worth more than two, Frank. That's a great no, idea. Ben should be a coach. I would have ran it, but, you know, like, I'm not going to give up an open dunk to give Ben a corner three. You know, it's pretty blasphemous for me to look back and, like, I, I maybe actually thought it was, like, an, a good idea. I'm not going to lie. Honestly, <laughs> if we needed a three and went for a quick two, it would be a solid idea, but that never happens. It's but like honestly, the shot honestly, lob is, like, a three for a two. Yeah. No, but th th that's the thing with Ben, though, like, not – like no joking aside, that was just he he wanted to shoot the ball because he made it like every time. Like <laughs> because like, Ben knew that shot, Bronson. Was, yeah, every time he shot, I thought it was going in. So like Ben knew Bronson was coming to break his three point records, and he had to go as hard as he could. <laughs> well, thanks, Joey. That, that <laughs> warms my heart. <laughs> nice, second best. That's all right. Um, ben used to steal everyone's rebounds too. See, that's not true. That so is true. true. No. Like, is it is it stealing rebounds? Yeah, he's just the only yeah. he's the only one who didn't have to block out, so he just got three. Because he guarded the other team's worst player every exactly. single game. Exactly. I wish that was my role. The Good. worst part was when the worst player was like Brandon Dawson, who was like six six, and I didn't get <laughs> rebounds those games. So I actually had to box out. Yes. Ben Westbrook. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll take that. Josh would would totally make fun of me for this because anytime I would cut down the lane, what would I do, Josh? <laughs> every time. <laughs> Hey, no, yeah, the mouse got to be open too. Like he's the most wide hey, open person. Like he's I so play, open. <laughs> ben and I play on the same team in men's league. He does the same thing, John. <laughs> hey, <laughs> mouse is hey, wide open. Like he's shocked he's not getting hey, the ball. Frank, that uh, is a great shot. I feel like <laughs> that was like, 17 on the clock. You're lucky you made it. <laughs> what do you mean I'm lucky I made it? Because <laughs> you would have gotten bench. You're 17 on the clock. You couldn't shoot. That's their four. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. that. Sophomore year. Wait, I thought it was, was freshman year. Was it, <laughs> that was, was junior it year. sophomore year? That, that was sophomore. I remember yeah. I came out against at North, at North Carolina, I remember it happening. But you made it. Uh, that Illinois North game was the last time I ever played uh, point guard. No, I remember I remember exactly. It was – we played at Iowa. or home against Iowa. And I came out and I airballed my first shot. It was a three with like 20 seconds left on the shot clock. It wasn't even close. In the time, well, because you know I was just a timeout place filler at that point. Um, Bo came in the timeout. He's like, unless there's five seconds or less on the shot clock, don't even look at the basket. <laughs> and he reiterated that in film the next day too. It wasn't yeah, a one-time thing. <laughs> hey, Joey, Joey, that yeah, that Illinois game that we saw in there. I remember you were subbed in at point guard for George. And I think we had like a backcourt violation or something. And Bo <laughs> said like, you're never playing point guard again or something like that. Well, I had never played point guard in my life until. <laughs> And Bo had the idea of putting me in at point guard at Illinois in a as a freshman in college. A freshman, and that, a, and that was a huge game because they were like a top twenty. Like it was a, it was, a, it was like for like fourth or third in the Big Ten at the. At the well, it was still pretty early, but we had no point guard. So and Josh was hurt, so we had. No were you a quarterback in high school? Yeah, so I should have had inherent skills of playing the point guard position. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's how he does it in the Fed. He told me I'd yeah. be the worst quarterback ever. So yeah, I had an over and back, and then I was bent. I never. Play point guard the rest of my career. <laughs> Would you have rather played your whole four years like you did there with the headband and goggles, or been national player of the year? Because I feel like you enjoyed playing in the goggles more than you did averaging. I actually, <laughs> I, no, I actually hated it. I just 
I don't know. I you just, like the idea of it. You like the no, idea of being a bench mobber. I put the headband on because all the sweat used to drip down the goggles the whole time, and I have such bad ADD that I just look at the sweat on the goggles oh, while I was running up and down the court. Frank, Frank, oh. Frank, Frank, honest question, Frank. How bad did that hurt when dude hit you at Indiana? That was a big win, but you had to sit the whole second half. Uh, I missed the next three games. Yeah, I know, but I, I, I didn't know in, in the moment because sometimes when you get in the face, like you and Vito always collapsed, but you actually were like <laughs> – No, I was actually, I was actually blind. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't see out of my eye immediately. Did it hurt worse than the non, non-vision or was the vision a thing? It was, it was like – it was kind of the same. It was hit in the eye, hurt really bad. And then normally like when you get hit in the eye, there's like that initial like – I don't Stars. know. Like, like, yeah, stars, like, flash where you, like, can't see. But mine mm-hmm. just went, like, black, like, immediately. Yeah. So, Sam, this this reminds me of the Oregon game when you got popped in the teeth. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, that's the same that happened to that you was and me against Duke. But, it, but it's what way... did, Sam? Wait, I what? The world's, I threw the world's worst alley-oop against Oregon, and you got popped in the teeth. Yeah, but but when you when I was watching rewatching that game, like, we had, like, I had, like, three – attempted dunks before that so I was just trying to jump over everyone and but I would rather get hit in the teeth than hit in the eye and miss three games the teeth it was just I couldn't bite anything for like eight months but but you had a root canal for that didn't you get a root canal the next morning I remember being in the apartment and you had to go get a root canal both of these teeth that's crazy yeah there's still a hole in the back of them yeah I just I just sit on the couch and not move and dilate my eye like six times a day for like a week but we had legendary pictures after that, so I mean, yeah. it's effect though, it helped. Was it hard to see with the glasses? Yeah, just because the sweat would run down my face. Frank Stoudemire. Did you guys realize Frank was this good? This was the only game, like the entire season, I didn't realize Frank was good. Like not that good, you know what I mean? Like I thought Frank was like one of us. Like we were all the same. We were really good, team oriented. We all like played well off each other. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, this was the game I realized Frank is like. Is Better than all of us. No, this is the the, the, the game I realized <laughs> Frank was the game I realized Frank was on another level. At Michigan. At Michigan. We won like yes. our ninth in a row. Frank yes. had like yeah. 23 and 12 or something. Yeah. And but he was like spinning in like transition, doing like I was like, what? That yeah, was like the game. game. I had a was, like, step the, back three at the end to like kind of put it away. And the, yeah. And the thing is that was a national, talk about that, you. that was a national TV game. That was a CBS game, and Frank went off. And it was like our ninth straight win. And I remember um I think it was Coach Ryan, because uh, me and him were doing the interview after the game with Frank. And I think he said, uh, I think Frank just uh, claimed first team all Big Ten. And, and that, I, I was like, oh, my God. Frank no, I remember that. We were sitting together. We are like, Frank is first team all Big Ten? What? Like, we had no idea Frank was good. <laughs> yeah. We well, because even until, like, Frank had 40, 43 against North Dakota, and it didn't yeah. – we all thought it was kind of a fluke. Like, yeah, what? exactly. Hey. It's been really small or really bad or something. show. What? We did. <laughs> No, but like, well, considering I had 12 points in our first three games. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. You were just like another just 25 minute guy, like <laughs> the, the big step, another Wisconsin big step out there. Hey. Yeah. But this was a game like the, just the moment. He was the only one who like in the entire game who played well on both teams. Yeah. Nobody played well but Frank. I mean, to be fair, we literally talked about it. He had a rule that he couldn't shoot a three under the five seconds left. It was, unless it was under no, five. No, I seconds. couldn't look at the basket. Even <laughs> two, that could have been wide open with ten seconds left. No, nope. but like, think about like Arizona. They had Aaron Gordon, who I think had five points in the game. Nick Johnson didn't have many points. Ronnie Ellis Jefferson was their best offensive player, and he had like yeah. eleven. Like, is probably the best defender he played against all year. Yeah, and me, Ben, and Trey went zero for nine from three. Our three guards. Wow. In, this, in, the, in, reg, in regulation. Yeah, ben, had a big, regulation. ben had a big one in overtime to start overtime. Yeah, in regulation. And our only three we made that wasn't <coughs> Frank was you banking one in. Banking it. That's right. The first So, like, nobody, nobody no, shot Bronson, well except for Frank. Bron- Bronson hit a huge three with, like, five minutes left. Oh, yeah. Bron- yeah. A bench guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, like Frank. Like, starters. Did, like, legitimately, did you know you were that? Because I feel like, like, watching you in this game and then even, like, in the summer, like, you then were just like, I'm awesome. Like, <laughs> Seriously, I mean, change. something changed quick. <laughs> I mean, I knew I was good my sophomore year. I was just mad. Like, I didn't get to play. When Trey was out. Josh was our point guard when Bronson needed a break, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much whoever, whoever, it's pretty much whoever got the rebound just dribbled it and we just ran the offense. 
Frank, that's literally from having zero, zero, whoever got it. <laughs> we went from having zero point guards to the next year having three point guards. Well, Ooh. hang on, because real quick, yeah. Sam, you, you tweeted this out the other day, um, how, like, you think it's hilarious that everyone thinks, like, the swing or, like, we ran a ton of offense. I think in 2014, it was the fourth-ranked offensive efficiency. You guys were first in 2015. Like, how did, like, how, why do people, can people watch and see, we, like, we didn't do anything? <laughs> I mean, I, I, think, I think so. We didn't really do too much. Um, yeah, like, like Josh said, whether it was Frank or me or Josh or Nigel grabbing a rebound, anyone was bringing it up. It didn't really matter. And we just kind of filled lanes and, and cut and did whatever we wanted. So, um, well, yeah. If you yeah, guys was, remember, the only time we called a set was after a timeout or after a free throw. Like, we didn't call we, – we huddled up and called set. Yeah. So, if there was just a flow of the game, we never had a play. Yeah, or, or remember. <laughs> first, first set of the game, we always ran uh, five man. Uh, yeah. me, and Frank, me, Frank, pick and roll. If I didn't jack a three or throw it to Frank, we just started just <laughs> looping. And, and then uh, there wouldn't be another play called until the under sixteen media timeout. Yeah. Well, and remember, we would always <laughs> we'd always go into each game with one play because it would be the other team's mascot. So if we played <laughs> Iowa, it'd be Hawkeye. If we played Kentucky, it'd be it'd be Wildcat, and those are the only plays that we yeah. put in. Well, Josh said we were Texas with orange, except Rooster. Yeah. That one changed. Remember. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, <laughs> please elaborate uh josh sent me this the other day i uh, after that tweet he said uh yeah we didn't have an offense we just randomly moved i would literally run to the I'd run the court either to the corner to space out hunting frank or you to set a screen just get you open i was a professional screener that was pretty much my job <laughs> he was a screener i literally ran, i literally did i ran if i didn't have the ball I would drip, run down the court just looking for Frank to headhunt his guy. <laughs> yeah, because that's how you get open. Sam. Oh, I'd run to the corner to get myself – yeah, I'd get myself open to them open, and that's pretty good offense. <laughs> that's good basketball. That's what the best yeah. players do. <laughs> and, and if you were 6'7". Oh, I'd stand in the corner. In the world. Huh? Yeah. If you were 6'7", you'd have been the best screener in the world. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I'm an undersized four. It hurt. Well, I mean, I think, I think we kind of – But you ran... said you play point guard. Well, a point game. four, point four, man. I mean, yeah, that's that's my but, position. But even even Ben's senior year, we kind of got away from sets a little more. I mean, um, it was a lot of random movement, Ben lifting <laughs> off the screens and stuff, and and kind of just spreading the floor. It wasn't. We still didn't have that much structure. Our last structure was like 2013 when we lost to Ole Miss. That was like our structure year. How much did um? I'll ask Sam because your relationship with Bo is amazing, um, in in many ways. How did Bo change from your freshman year to that 2015 year? Um, he was just looser. Like he let he let us rock. I mean, I think the the, the random kind of offense was. I mean, people say like, "Oh, did Bo not do it?" No, like he just he knew we were talented. I think starting your senior year, like knew that we liked playing with each other, knew how to play off each other, and we didn't need a ton of structure because we were smart guys. And um, a coach that can realize that, I think. It helps, and yes, my, my freshman year, he was obviously he was hard on me all three years, but it was so much different with just the way like our practices were set, our <coughs> off-season regimen was set. I mean, I, I think you guys can all speak on that too. Like, it became much more like smart. You know, I think you know Eric helped that, Henry helped that, but you know, just um, it felt like a whole different vibe, and I, I think that contributed to a lot of wins. It was after we lost to Maryland, Maryland our senior yes. year. Yes, we 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 did like two a two hour practice of the swing before the Michigan I wasn't State there. game. And well, you I wasn't someone there. slammed the ball. Somebody slammed the ball. I don't know if it was Evan. And I think I was like, "What are we doing? Like, we we don't do that. We can't run the swing. Like, stop." <laughs> I remember. So I missed that practice because I had to go to a funeral. So when I got back the next day and we had practice again, Bo came to me before practice and was like, um, "Uh, we're we're back to running the swing." Um, we had a long practice with it yesterday, and my response was, why? Yeah. Well, I remember I because remember we played bad the game before, and Bo came in and started playing Platteville footage. I was about to say, yeah. We played like 1980s Platteville <laughs> From but the then, 80s. But then we went out against Michigan State, and I don't think we ran the swing one time. Frank hit no. 35. It didn't matter. <laughs> I just literally would run down the court and just go stand somewhere and ask for the ball or set a screen for Sam or – no, no that, that that game, Frank, was so on fire. I think I shot four times, and I would catch the ball and just throw it to Frank and just run to the other end of the court. I, like, it did not matter. I was like, I well, think game, we, we, what game was this? Uh, Michigan State, uh, Michigan State when, we, when we clinched 
Big Ten, Frank had like oh, 33. Oh, yeah, yeah, Oh, Frank was unbelievable. <laughs> we, just, we just threw it to him and just ran away. <laughs> Honestly. Well, because the teams yeah. that we – like, because Michigan State's one of those teams, I guess, that they're not going to double the post. Like, they're not going to yeah. double anybody. So, we just gave Frank the ball. And most teams, yeah. like Penn State's, would they double and then we'd have to – and he was hitting like hook shots off the top of the backboard, like <laughs> like ridiculous shots. I hit a bank shot from like the baseline. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know that. I don't even know how I did it. I just threw it at the backboard and it went in. See, I think that's honestly Izzo's making the right decision there to make you make those shots because yeah. with yeah. the team that we For had, sure. that's what team, that's what you had to do, and it you just beat them by yourself. <laughs> Here's a Big Ten championship where. Uh, Josh was not out of bounds saving the ball. <laughs> we came back from 12 down, and, like, Michigan State was balling. Like, it wasn't like they, like, choked. They were making so many shots that game. If that shot would have went – if Brandon Dawson's shot would have went in, I would have been so mad. How did that not go in? Because I would have given up the three to tie it and the shot to lose. Nigel was, Nigel was awesome in this game. I keep forgetting. He had, like, 26, I think. That was great rotation, Frank. Frank's so good. No, they didn't oh score. God, that would suck they if Brandon score. Dawson made that. The they didn't score. They didn't How did they not go in? They didn't score in overtime. I think we had a 12 0 run. Yeah. Josh, did you save it in regular time or overtime? I think it was, it was regulation because we were up by a lot in overtime. Sam, yeah, how many of these guys – how many of these guys played in the league? I think I was texting Josh about it the other day. How – how good the Big Ten championship was this year versus what it would have been. Well, they had Valentine and Bryn Forbes, um, Costello. Dawson tries. Is now... Like this. Like... They just hits this garbage. Ugh. That's what I'm saying. They were balling too. Valentine was nice. They were good. That was like the only three he hit in the second half, though, Frank. <laughs> I think we saw shot, this is the only this is the only bucket like, they made all hit game. Hard shots. Yeah. Trice, Trice was tough. Tom Tom, Tom Tom had a three right before that. He hadn't hit yeah, a three like in twelve games. I remember he just didn't three in his life before that. I threw the ball straight to Brandon Duffy for freshly done. That used to make me so mad. We'd have a guy on a scouting report. He's made two threes all season. And then he comes out and he hits a three against us. Exactly. Always. And then we get yelled at for not closing out hard. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you go under? Why'd you go under? <laughs> then, uh, Foops, I saw that you had said the Oregon game was the most fun game you've ever been a part of. Even over the Kentucky game, like, I'm just curious. I, I have no idea if you, like, were just saying that in the moment. Well, yeah. Um, I think it's just, like, yeah, you, know, you, start off, you start off that season 16-0, and 0, and then you have a little bit of a rough stress, but then you still end up as a number two overall seed. And that was something we didn't do the previous year. So it's, like, that initial excitement of actually, like, solidifying yourself as, like, a really good program, like a top – eight program in the country at that point. And then you go out in that game and you kind of just have like a ridiculous atmosphere and come back and like, that's really what kind of sparked the run into the tournament, that game and that second half. So, yeah, for sure. I mean, if we don't ever have that comeback in that atmosphere, you have to wonder like what happens. And it, it was just like a different Wisconsin. I mean, we scored like 80 points in the NCAA tournament. Yeah. That just didn't happen so, probably so in our previous years. Happen, Kentucky doesn't happen if that – let Never me, goes the way right. I, I think about this, and I've been, talked about this. I thought we were the best team in the tournament. Frank, your junior year, my sophomore year, Ben's senior I, I thought at the Final Four, I thought we were usually the best team there and that we should have won it. Um, and that hurts worse to me than almost the national championship because people kind of forget about the year before that. But I like to this day, I'm convinced we were easily the best team there. Well, especially because we were playing Kentucky, who was in – yeah. And we would have had to beat UConn, who was a, was seven, a seven. Yeah, I think to win it all. College basketball was just much worse that year, which was good for us. And right. we, we we might have been the best team just because it was. I thought that Arizona game was the championship that year. Yeah, and if they we, were awesome. Yeah, they were. They were I remember yeah. watching those guys get off the bus and looking around at us while we're sitting on the bus, like, how are we supposed to go? <laughs> and I was like furthering what Sam was saying. Like, I wrote down, it just it feels like a crime that neither of those teams like won the actual whole thing. Like, like the Kentucky game, my senior year was like, it was the Harrison shot. Other than that, like we played really well. They just, they, they won. Like, they like make a three the whole half. That three, like, how do you make that three? And then the, um, the Duke game, like it just, well, like five minutes left and it just, it feels like wrong. We just fell apart. Weird. 
you know when you play the Big Ten tournament or the NCAA tournament, like you like sit in the stands and watch <laughs> the guys out there? I remember sitting with Josh and we'd be like, we're going to go out there? Like, we're going to do that? <laughs> I yeah. agree with that. Seriously. I loved it. But. Well, yeah. You, well, <laughs> yeah. But what happens when you, know that you put another seven-foot white guy on me? Yeah. I know. But also think about this. Like, like Kentucky junior my, – like my junior year, uh, the, the game we won in the Final Four, we were the only team to match up size and athletically with them. Even yeah. though we were – I mean, we didn't look the part, but – we had the same size off the bench yeah. and on the starting lineup, and we we're just as athletic. You know, like we were the only team that kind of matched that. And we weren't scared of them, which a lot of that was because of what happened here before. <laughs> yeah, Ben, just to go back to that point before we move off from it, why is it that sitting from that perspective, like in the stands, makes it look so much more challenging than when Difficult. you're sitting, like even I don't know. when I'm sitting on the bench? Because when when Josh and I were just in Phoenix watching Frank like on the bench, like we're watching the NBA game, it was like it looked easier than yeah. maybe, like sitting yeah. close to the college game. I don't know why. Um, no, me, me and Joey, yeah, me and Joey would be in our dorm, I remember freshman year, and we'd watch like, you know, just like Virginia, Indiana or something. And we'd be like, these guys look so good. And then like <laughs> the next night we'd be playing against Michigan State. Like, yeah. It's crazy how many heartbreak losses we've had in the last five, five years of all of us playing together. I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you in Florida and the Notre Dame game was tough too. Right. But, but we had so many – but the only reason you had those losses is because you you're so good and making well, and, it's not a heartbreaking and, loss if you lose in the NIT like right. But yeah, and you're on you're it, on the other side of that so many times too. Yeah. Is it because exactly. the style of play like that it's always within like one possession? You know what I mean? It always felt like like it's always a heartbreak. It's not like a I mean, five to seven like, point I mean, loss. I mean, I think that goes to show the right teams were in those situations. I mean, when you have two powerhouses, I mean, those games can be close. Look at. Look at the gauntlet we went through my junior year. Like, all those games were close because they were good teams. It's Oregon, North Carolina, Arizona, Kentucky, Duke. I mean, like, you, there's nothing I mean, well, in thinking about Well, and how many, times, how many times at the end of practice would we go through situations like that when coach would put us, and we hated it. Nobody. <laughs> and yeah. It, I mean, there's a reason he was doing it. Sure. And uh, had he play by Showy to bring up uh, his year so we could pull up the highlight of the – I mean, that's like the best shot ever. So, yeah. Had, I didn't bring up my year. I said how many times in our careers. <laughs> in <those situations. laughs> I'm joking. No, that, that would have been no. – That is just how Showy played basketball too. He just put his head, <laughs> head down and run through people. That's well, so it, true. That's all I do how to do. Like, people talk Bradson. about the shot. People talk about the shot and the belt, but the fact that he didn't turn that crossover – <laughs> crossover over was like ridiculous. I don't know how. Or he... fall, yeah. Because he's or... the only one who knows how to play that bowling ball style. The thing I always think about now when I when I watch this is how close my foot was to the line, and I had no idea. Like if I would have had a foot on the line and did that celebration, I would have looked like a complete. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> no, that and you and you would have never gotten that shot if uh, Bronson wasn't cramping. Right. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Zero percent chance. Yeah, he's keep that move. Or, and you know that was a problem Brownson had even in high school. Uh, my mom used to bring him waters and electrolytes in AAU tournaments because he wouldn't drink water and he would just cramp. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was like a problem he's had like his whole career. And like you said, like our earlier career, if we weren't in our seats in the film room with our books out ready to go when he walked in. And then our last year, 2015, we would be playing video games, playing ping pong. Coach Ryan would walk in and play with us for 10 minutes and just joke around. Yeah. And shoot yeah. It just, it helps. <laughs> like, it I mean, it, so it just changed. And I, and I will say, like, I think Nigel helped with that. Like, Nigel obviously, was like, huge in that. I think we all kind of changed for the better, but, and Trey kind of helped with the change the culture thing. Coach didn't like that at first, but then we're like, no, like, it's a good thing. Like, we are using what everyone, taught us and now we're gonna whatever and then not changing coach, the principles we're just changing yeah, and, the, yeah. and then nigel came in and was like what up pops and then everyone was like, okay <laughs> like, i think the uh i think it's a huge testament to coach too because like how much reflection did he did did he do to get comfortable with this because he was in his way for 40 years of doing it and he had to change because but again yeah, ultimately he never made it to a final four so like right. at some point you have that self-reflection and like oh, i'll change with him he, he didn't know what he had when we all showed up like it was I mean when you think about like recruiting and all this stuff like Sam's really the only one that was like 
like this high, like big recruit. The rest of us were like kind of question marks. So he didn't know what he had. He knew he just had like a good group of guys, but that doesn't really translate to on-court success. But then when you see these guys are having so much fun, like off the court together yeah. and then translating to them winning games, you're not going to like try to change that or For just sure. and, like make that different. You're just going to play into it because you know, that's what works. You and guys that, almost made him join. He, he became a part of it. Like in our press conferences and everything. Yeah, like, exactly. Especially the last few years, he was joking around just as much as we were. He let us rock. And that like, I, I, t- I told coach, I like appreciated him letting us lead the team like he didn't say a word ever in practice like he trusted us yeah. upperclassmen to that, run the team that, and i respect coach a lot for that and he, and he knew like it took like frank or me or you or ben or, like you could just give him a look during practice and he knew like time to wrap it up soon like he was really good at using i don't know using us like to help like i think even showing like the hill like he changed the hill like a thing that was huh. religious us four. With another, uh, you, me, Josh, and Showy, we would run and just do like high fives and stuff on the way by each other. Yeah. yeah. Hey, the hill sucked. <laughs> the hill sucked. I used to have nightmares about like Wait, that. It wasn't, night yeah. it wasn't yeah. like that hard. It was just like, I don't want to run up a hill. Like, I just don't want to do it. The hill made one of our teammates beat themselves. <laughs> kind of like the I mean, hill. I don't know. I, and Sam liked it, so I would always be pissed off the night before because he'd be like, Dude, it was. Hill. It was the hill was so much easier for me than. Oh, Brian. it was the hill wasn't that hard. It was just like a nuisance. It was, it's just it was like three annoying. hours of running. It's just annoying. Sprints. It's like you got to drive all three the hours. way out there, yeah. and then you got to do this, and then you got to drive all the way back, and then like we got to. Some of us have like workouts we have to do after the hill. Well, so we, we go, go to that pool. Yeah, yeah we go to the pool. That was stupid. <laughs> Joey loved the pool. I love the pool. <laughs> Don't leave the pool out of it, Frank. No, it, it really wasn't a good like, because we would spend two days running the hill, and then you have two off days. So we were we had three days where we had a basketball on our hands, out of seven in the off season. It's like yeah. what? <laughs> it made no sense. But like that's what we I did. hated the on court <laughs> circuit thing way more. Plyometrics, harder, but at least we were on the court. Way worse. Way worse. It made you, you a better basketball exactly. player. Well, and then you'd have to do one-on-ones or you do individuals after you finish the plyo workout. And if you remember the bigs ones, we had to play one-on-one in the post with five oh, different passers for straight seconds and then switch. <laughs> and you were doing exhausting. that against Evan. And, by, and, and I'm doing it against Evan, who when he gets tired, he just starts throwing out. Oh, yeah, yeah, he gets tired, so he hits you. And <laughs> the, worst, the worst I had to go through was when me and Josh were paired up with Jordan Taylor our sophomore year. He just – no i i hated uh one-on-one drills with dewey because he's the king of getting tangled up and tangles <laughs> mcgee the, <laughs> the amount of arm fights and like times i was so close to swinging on him was and i would just say something just way too mean and yeah, i'd but, just be like oh, but every time you saw dewey you made a shot so it, was, it worked out i did he gave me confidence <laughs> In the most cliche question of all time, because I know who I'd pick in this group, who would you want to be quarantined with of us five for a month? <laughs> I was quarantined in Russia alone. So, and I had to be tested twice for coronavirus. How do they do they that? They shove that thing up your nose? Yeah, they put, they put the Q-tip up in your thoughts. Uh. <laughs> Does it and, hurt? Uh, not too, I mean, once you know it's coming, it's fine, but... Um, they did that. It, like, take your temperature. You have to show your passport. They give you this sheet of paper that says that you have to carry around. That, like, if you if you're seen out, they you can get in trouble. So, like, <clears throat> everyone was like, "Why didn't you leave? Why didn't you leave? Whatever." I was like, "I couldn't. Like, I literally couldn't. Leave. I was in quarantine. Like, I can't leave." So, like, well, the, they, day, the day it was lifted, then I left. And they delivered stuff. They deliver food to your doorstep, didn't they? Yeah, like every couple of days. Yeah. Ben, ben is the one who can sit on a couch and watch a whole oh. scene of a show without moving. Seriously, I, I, I'd be that right now. I disagree. Frank, you're pretty good at that too. Ben, ben and I once played uh, <laughs> Nazi zombies on Call of Duty from like 8 a.m. till midnight one day. <laughs> I brought, That's just an average Tuesday for Sam. We literally we had TV, TVs from, in my living room and we played it all day. No, I, 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 the I difference is Sam's pacing around the room while he's playing. Yeah. Sam can't sit still. 
Josh, you know what quarantining with Ben would be like? There'd be pee bottles everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was like six years ago. It hasn't changed. Pretzels, goldfish, and pee bottles. 